Hi everybody and welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Today I'm going to react to the five songs that are nominated for Best Original Song for this year's Academy Awards. That's 2022. I'm a jazz musician, I'm a pianist, so hopefully I've got something to bring to this. I'm also a huge fan of awards shows and the Academy Awards in particular. So I'll be watching this Sunday and um, I don't know which song I'll be rooting for. That's what I'm gonna figure out right now. I'm going to listen to all five of them and I'll let you know that I've seen, I think only two of the movies. I've seen um, Encanto and I've seen No Time to Die, but I haven't seen the other three and here we go. I'll only be able to give you six or seven second clips from these recordings just because of copyright laws. Anything extra that I need to play, I'll play on the piano to give context. Here we go. The first one is Dos Oruguitas from Encanto. And I think that that means two caterpillars. Let's listen. Always a fan of the classical guitar. Dos oruguitas, enamoradas, pasan... First thing I hear. Key is C major, and we have this descending, descending chord progression. I have a whole video about this called the forgotten chord progression. Just like that. It's, it's much like, um, da, 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 I can't fight this feeling deep inside of me. Da, girl, you got, you know, that one. It, there's a lot of songs like that. I'm a fan of the forgotten chord progression, as I call it, this descending, going lower and lower. Um, I want to say that I think that the the rhythms being used are pop. Like immediately pop, not so much um, Latin influence, like the classical guitar would um, lead us to believe, and that's okay. It's Lin-Manuel Miranda. I like this part. And then again, it's the uh, it's the five of six chord. I think that's really unique. I don't think anybody's done that before in conjunction with the descending chord progression. I like that. I don't mind this. I don't love it. Ba -ba 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 -da. We're still descending, but but we're moving more in the realm of like what what a lot of pop songs do. Ba -da -do -da -do, ba -da -do. And then there's a the, the minor four that feels a lot like Coco to me, although I don't exactly remember why. Um, just first impression. Okay, at this point, it's a little much for me. This is the fourth time we're going into this same chord progression with the exact same melody. And if I spoke Spanish, I might be able to tell you if it was important enough to repeat four times because of what the lyrics are, but I don't. Um, so to me, musically, a little boring at this point. Ooh. Mm, that's a really nice scale. I'm a fan of that scale. Just like the beginning now, but I can tell there's more emotion. I'm going to look up the lyric. It's time. Two oruguitas in love and learning spend every evening and morning learning to hold each other, their hunger burning, to navigate a world that turns and never stops turning. Those are some, that's a good English translation. I think it rhymes. Okay, against the weather, the wind grows colder, but they're together. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, the lyrics are beautiful, and any repeating that gets done is warranted now, in my opinion. There's a lot of dialogue in the middle section of this. I'm gonna get to the end of it. I'm going to guess that it pumps up and like gets going. I hope that it doesn't, but I'm gonna guess that it does. Yeah, I mean, it's Disney, it's Pixar, right? They've got to, uh, they've got to tug at those heartstrings. So uh, I give a thumbs down for that, but uh, it's just me. I, I love for, uh, I really like to have a song that has so much um, heart to to keep 
small and close. But, you know, again, within the context of the film, it probably served the purpose of let's pump you up about this now. All right, that's Dos Oreguitas. The next one, Billie Eilish, No Time to Die. Usually what is done in a James Bond song is that you, you start with a minor chord and then you you raise the fifth degree to the sixth degree and then you, you raise it again and then you come back down. Here it's a little different. We've got like an E minor going on and then a C major. So, so it is that, but it, it changes the root. And then we go to A, but I hear the C sharp very quietly over that A chord. And I think that's a subtle, nice change that Billy and Phineas have thrown in here. But, but you could imagine like, um, like the Adele song, right? This is the end. Close your eyes and count to ten, right? The, and then I could play you like five or six or seven other James Bond songs that kind of use the same flavor. But, but that's the James Bond sound. We're probably going to hear it lots of times as we go along here. I really like the production. I should have known. It's a piano, and it's this warm E minor chord, and her note, ah. Uh, it's the seven of the E minor chord. I think that's nice and kind of pensive. I'd leave alone. There, that's the regular nine. Sweet. Just goes to show. I really like how you hear both C sharp and C within the same chord. Oh, that's killer. But I saw you. Oh, you can hear a trumpet. It's disguised. James Bond. You'll you'll hear that in most James Bond songs, also, and you know, all throughout the movies. Oh, that's tasty the way they disguised it and just snuck it in there. Was I stupid to love you? Was I reckless? Do, 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 do. We go to the C major realm, and this is must be the pre chorus, and it really moves us along, and I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. Uh, oh, she goes up high there. Woo! That's so beautiful. And the production is magic. It's ethereal. It's mysterious. It's current. And it absolutely fits with, you know, the James Bond feel of everything. They bring in the crazy dramatic strings. That's really nice. I love it. I, let it go. I really like how this song, it's time to pick up the pace a little bit, right? Like get you going, kind of like the other song, but um, it's very subtle here. We just have like drums that sound like they're um, really far away or like really compressed and maybe um, inside of a box, like you barely hear it. I like that. Orchestral brass comes in, very James Bond. Nice way to kick it up another notch. That was the apex of the song and it was with an orchestra. Huge trombones. Um, I love that kind of uh, climax of a song. You don't have to make the big pop beat and, you know, like bring everybody's uh, emotions in with a, with a pop song. This is, it's current, but it's orchestral and it, it's really moving. Um, yeah, I like this better. Already this is my front runner. There's just no time to die. 
and we end with that surf guitar sound on that chord. E minor with a major seven and a nine. E minor, nine, major seven. Gorgeous. Next song, Somehow You Do, written by the great Diane Warren, who is probably nominated every single year most times, and sung by Reba McIntyre, who I love, from the movie Four Good Days. A minor, C major, G, F, F major. All right, I'm going to tell you something right off the bat. I was hoping to not hear this, but I have heard it. Um, we have A minor, C major, uh, G major, F major, and this is the classic minor six to major one to five, major five to major four progression that we see all over, all over pop music, and we have for years and years. So I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm already tired of this, and I'm going to try not to come at this song with that kind of an attitude, but this is my opinion about four chord songs, especially these four chords. If you're going to do one, the melody has to be so special to pull it off. Taylor Swift is great at it. Charlie Puth is great at it. There are some people who are really good at it, but we're going to see here because I'm afraid I'm going to be bored. So you feel like you've run out it actually took me this long to realize that we're in 6-8, which is cool. To keep the love of faith, but the dark is night still Kudos to the song for breaking away from four chords after a couple times through. Now we just have four, five, uh, six minor again, and twice. It might be a pre-chorus. It's the end of the road. It's just cause you don't know. I like the skips. Da, do, do, da, do, da, da, do. There's a lot of nice skips, um, which make for an interesting melody. I don't know if it's a super strong melody for me. Um, I can tell there's a, you know, a message here of hope, which is common in country songs. Um, talking about a road ending, but you, it might not be the ending. You just don't know where it's leading to. It's fine. It's fine. I know I'm a smug musician. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Somehow you do. So you feel like. So it's not really. I mean, I guess it was a chorus, and the chorus ends with that tagline, um, Somehow you do, or that title. And I uh, get that. All right. So you don't know how you're going to do it. Somehow you do. That's, that's a nice title. When you think. It's the end of the road. It's I like the harmonies and I love Reba McIntyre's voice. I think she's really pulling this song off about as well as anybody could. It's very, very Nashville production, which I'm honestly, I'm tired of. It kind of sounds the same as a lot of country songs to me. It's okay. I know a lot of people like it and that's cool. Okay, I can hear that they're going to kick it up a notch here. They're going to take it up maybe a half step. And the good, because I was really bored of those same three chords happening again, even though it was the bridge to me. It was just like, I was just like, blah, I've already heard these chords. I already know this melody. Sorry. Um, but looks like they're going to kick it up. Let's listen. When you think it's the end. Yeah, we've kicked it up a half step. My favorite thing about the song is the way that it goes, and you never know, do. I don't know what the word is there, but, but it does land on the nine of the minor one, so that's cool. Do. That's, that's nice and warm, I think. How you do. Mm -hmm. I do how, I like how they bring it back to nothing at the end and end with a hum. Cool, solid. Next tune. Down to Joy for the film Belfast, written by Van Morrison, who I got to see at the Hollywood Bowl a few years ago. Talked about four boring chords. Now we're going to deal with three of them, but I'm not going to call them boring yet. We've got G major, we've got D and C, so it's one, four, and five. Very common in popular music. Here we go. I like the saxophone right off the bat. Okay. 
That's kind of cool. We already hear the title of the song. It wraps up the, the first A section. I like it. When I was coming down. I like the tambourine on, on, on the drum set. I like, I like the classic Van Morrison horns. It, it makes you think of like Brown Eyed Girl. That's a nice pre-chorus. We go to the four chord. Do, 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 do. I really like any time that a song uses the uh, submediate like that, the the minor three chord or B minor in this case. And then we go A minor do, 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 to G major. She was standing there before, there before me when I was coming down. Okay, I think that the verse is the chorus. It's like it starts with a chorus. There, there, was, there wasn't really a chorus. I, I think. I think it starts with the chorus. This is the kind of song that just sounds like home to me because it's Van Morrison and I grew up listening to him a lot. And to be honest, it's boring to me also, um, just music theory wise, I guess. But the melody is not boring to me. His soul is not boring to me. And the production is not boring to me. It's the kind of song that I think could grow on me with a few listens. We've got an instrumental solo. Yeah, that hardly ever happens these days. I like it. So good. Gratitude. When I was coming down. Well, we've got again what I called the pre chorus before, but now I, I changed my mind. It's just the B section. It feels like gospel music to me a lot, and this is just gonna—it's just gonna repeat and repeat until the end, with a little more background vocals, a little more horns, and uh, I'll have to see the movie. It, I'll bet it gives a really nice vibe. Next is "Be Alive," written by Beyonce and Dixon for King Richard. It feels so good to be alive. Dang. It feels so good to be alive. That's nice. We get E minor again, all the way up to the 11, and such a cool melody. Digging it already. We heard E harmonic minor there now. We've got that sharp seven. I knew I had champions. Love the harmonies. Cool. I thought it went to the four chord to do the dun, 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 like that. And I really like that because it sounded like we were in E minor. And I really dig songs that like start on the four. But, but now it seems like we're in G. So really it was the, you know, the minor two. So when we, when we, we'll have I didn't do it exactly right, but we've got that that kind of um, that kind of stuff going on. It's it's super special. I really really like it. Holy moly! We've had a natural sixth the whole time, but all of a sudden that's a raised sixth. It's really colorful. We're, we're dealing with different modes here, different minor scales, and Beyonce navigates through them like a captain on the sea or something. I, I don't know. And I really like how what the harmonies are doing, and I like the, the feel. There's a sweet laid back thing that's happening with the background singers. I just want to say this tempo just man you just can't help but move to it just ooh i love it i haven't seen the movie but i have seen the venus and serena williams sisters play tennis many 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 times and 
I like how this just keeps going like this. It's like those sisters who just keep, I mean, I don't know, you, you, it's like tennis, right? They just keep putting the ball back over and over. It's like driving. And, and I like how we haven't picked up past this mm, mm, yet. It's just constant. That's that laid back that I'm talking about. Forgot all my family by my side. A little bit laid back. Love it. I don't know. It's like a sports anthem. It's like a new sports anthem that just drives it home the whole song. And I'm a fan. I don't know if I like this one better than the Billie Eilish yet. But to me, they're both the front runners. Oh, that's all of them. Okay. I listened to every single one. If I had to rank them. I don't know about Beyonce and Billie Eilish. My gosh. I love both of them so much. I don't think I can pick. If I had to predict, though, I predict Beyonce. I think I predict Beyonce, but it's almost, I almost predict Billie Eilish. Um, but yeah, I mean, that one, they're, they're both forces to be reckoned with. I guess I, I guess I predict Beyonce. Um, but I think it could go either way. And I hope it goes one of those two ways. Um, I don't think it will go to uh, Diane Warren here. I don't think it will go to Lin-Manuel Miranda, but I would probably put him third. Yeah, so I guess if I had to rank, we're going we're gonna to go Beyonce, Billie Eilish, Lin-Manuel Miranda, Van Morrison, Diane Warren. But it's, it's a pretty good, pretty good group of songs this year. And I had a really good time listening to them. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I do lots of fun stuff about music, all kinds of music. A lot of times I'm teaching you about how to play piano by ear and how to play jazz piano. But a lot of times I'm just diving in to the stuff that excites me about music. So I hope you had a good time. Please like the video, leave me a comment, tell me who you think is going to win or rank them like I did. I always like to rank things. Let me know your one through five, press the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.